All right, and welcome back to the channel, everybody. I hope you're doing fine. So today we will have a look at more tips and tricks how to improve in Hunt Showdown. This is part three. If you missed part one and two, they are in the pinned comment and in the description. With this episode, our guide playlist will reach 200 tips in total. As always, this guide is aimed at newer players to the game, but maybe some veterans will find something new too. I created this video during 1.5.2, so if you're watching the video in a couple of months, some things might have changed. Check the pinned comment, I update the video every now and then. I did that with part 1 and 2 as well. Now, before we start, I want to thank today's sponsor of this video. Yep, you heard it correctly. Now you're probably wondering, who is that magnificent sponsor that made this video possible? It's Crytek. So, a big thank you to Crytek for sponsoring this video today. Now, let's get started. Tip 151. Explosive ammo and choke bombs. Beside wax dynamite, no explosive can go off in choke bombs. However, explosive ammunition will work just fine when people are in choke bombs. Tip 152. Fixed lantern spots. Since the first video, lots of things have changed. Increased burn timer, choke bombs got implemented, they became a two-charge tool instead of a single consumable, they added self-skin and many more changes make burning not that big of a deal anymore. If you're in desperate need of some fire, you should know that every supply point on land always has a lantern next to the regular three ammo boxes and the special ammo box. The boat supply points next to water do not have these lantern spawns, at least whenever I check them. So be careful with that, otherwise you run to the supply point for nothing. Tip 153. Check towers quickly. Need some supplies? Maybe a medkit, ammo, special ammo or even a better gun? You can always check the little watchtowers. You don't have to go all the way up to check what's in there. Look up from below and if the tower has ammo, you will already see the box from below. Need a medkit? You see the box? Skip the tower and save some time. Tip 154. Skipping enrage phases. Most people melee the bosses nowadays. They will normally have three enrage phases. And that happens every time they lose 25% of their life. If you manage to inflict a huge shit on them, before they lose 25%, you can even skip one of these enrage phases. Start with a heavy, light, heavy combo to skip one enrage phase. With Scrap Beak and the Assassin it's a bit more difficult, but it works very well with the Butcher and the Spider. I already have a guide for Scrap Beak, let me know if I should do guides for the other bosses too. Tip 155. Get good gear for free. To save some money in the long run, always hit the free shuffle button after each match and check the free hunters. They can come with some nice gear. Springfield Marksman, double packs, double officer, melee tools and sometimes even fancy stuff like a flash bomb. Recruit them, store their gear and send them to the retirement saloon. Tip 156. Handling contraband items. If you struggle to keep all the contraband weapons, tools and consumables, you can always just have a couple level 1 free recruits in your roster. The limitation for contraband items only applies to your storage, but not to your hunter equipment. Hunters can carry as many contraband weapons and consumables of the same type as they want. I use this for example to save up on some high tier contraband guns or if I get too much free stuff from the free hunter recruits. Tip 157. You can shoot uncooked explosives. Sick of people running away from your cooked gifts? You can shoot the explosive once it hits the ground to skip that. By the way, every consumable can be shot once it's airborne. But it's a bit easier to hit it while it's lying on the ground. Works very well with some scope weapons. Tip 158. Body oh, physics. Right, right, right. Having troubles identifying from where somebody got killed? Bodies normally always fly away from the position of the killer. Tip 159. Avoiding melee trades. Name a more iconic duo than two hunters charging at each other and trading with their Never. melee weapons. All melee tools can kill with a single heavy attack to the head. To increase your chances of winning and not just trading, jump before you release your attack. You have the high ground and therefore it's easier for you to hit the head while it becomes rather difficult for them to finish you with a single hit. Tip 160. Iron Sharpshooter Fire Rate. You can increase the fire rate of some rifles by picking specific traits. Let's have a look at the description of Iron Repeater and Iron Sharpshooter. Remain in iron sights after firing a shot while using lever action rifles and 
Remain in iron sights after firing a shot while using bolt action rifles. But nobody tells you that the trait also increases your rate of fire by a lot. Just one example, emptying the Vedderly without Iron Sharpshooter takes roughly 11 seconds. With the trait, you can empty it in roughly 9 seconds. Tip 161, Choke Bomb Butcher. Don't want to lose life bars to the fire from the Butcher? Toss a Choke Bomb at him. Be careful though, the hook will reignite if he touches fire. Furthermore, keep in mind that you're sacrificing a Choke Bomb, which you might miss later in a PvP battle. But for newer players, this should make this boss fight a bit easier. Tip 162. Water Explosive Traps. Ah yes, let's get crafty. Explosives do not detonate when you toss them into the water. However, they will float at their impact location. Shooting them destroys them completely. One of the explosives works a bit differently. The Sticky Bomb. It will float in the water and is still armed. You can place an alert trip mine next to it. Should a player trigger the alert trip mine, the sticky bomb will go off too. Just uh, don't place the alert trip mine too close to the sticky bomb. Tip 163. Dauntless choke bomb. My regular viewers know that I'm a huge fan of Dauntless. Not for putting out explosives that people toss at me, but it's nice for putting out choke bombs when the enemies try to interrupt your barbecue time. Tip 164, Choke Bomb Flanks. This takes a bit more practice and some combat experience regarding when and where to use it. If you cook a Choke Bomb long enough, they will detonate in the air. You can detonate it at a height where you can't walk through it without suffering from the coughing effect. But you can crouch under the cloud just fine. This is pretty mean because the sound effect from the Choke Bomb will completely cover all your crouched footsteps. Tip 165, crouching over branches. You can jump them, but you can't crouch over them without breaking them. Tip 166, dual wield rhythm. Every dual wield loadout has a specific rhythm. If you just shoot as fast as possible, you will have these weird double shots with a long downtime before you can fire your next shot. Of course, this can instantly kill your target, but it's recommended to time the shots. That way, your fire rate will be more efficient. Tip 167, new reload for Mosin and Lebel. Since the latest patch, you don't have to lose a bullet every time you reload the Mosin and the Lebel. Shoot and hit the reload button immediately. That way, your hunter will use the moment of the bolt cycle to put in a new bullet. This only works for the Mosin and Lebel right now, not for other guns, such as the Spectre or Dolph. Tip 168, get rid of outlines for better crack shots. Warbanks are a huge part of Hunt Showdown and shooting through cracks. However, these pulsating outlines can make it sometimes quite hard. I personally recommend disabling them in the HUD settings by switching to Exclude Doors and Windows in the Highlight Interactable Objects section. Tip 169. Banning Pistols. This sounds rather basic, but during the streams I still see people who are surprised by this, so better cover this in Discord as well. You don't have to click every single time you want to shoot with fanning. You can just hold your mouse button and the hunter will empty the pistol. Although the tap fire is highly recommended with pistols that have a lot of recoil. For example, the uppercut. Tip 170. Levering rifles. Same as with fanning, just hold the button and the hunter will continue shooting until the gun is empty. Tip 171. Spin revives. Since 1.5.2, you can't go full Beyblade anymore and spin like crazy doing revives. However, you can still turn around and with a bit of practice make it still a bit harder to actually get hit. Tip 172. Realistic Chaos Bombs. If you want a Chaos Bomb to sound more realistic, mix in a few of your own shots. A Chaos Bomb never has overlapping gun sounds, so tossing in a few shots of your own to produce some simultaneous gun sounds will make your Chaos Bomb sound way more like an actual gunfight. Tip 173. Decoy Chaos Bombs. Chaos Bombs can also be used to push people. Sometimes it's hard to push people through choke points, especially if they're already holding the angle. Toss a Chaos Bomb at them, it will sound like a real explosive. It's very likely that they will give up their position and you can push with the Chaos Bomb. If you do it fast enough, you might even be able to shoot them in the back while they reposition. However, wait for the running footsteps first. Sometimes, be it due to them being dumb or brave, they keep holding the angle. Tip 174. 
Turn off lanterns and scrap the glare. If scrap leak is on fire, the loot he drops will be destroyed. Always turn off the lanterns in his lair, since he sets himself on fire very often with his end wave swings. Tip 175. Get rid of barbed wire. I had this one already and I updated the video in the pinned comment section, but so much changed that I decided to mention it once more. Right now you need to attack with slash attacks to get rid of concertina wire. That means everything that applies bleeding will work. However, there are different levels of effectiveness here. A puny little knife with light attacks will take quite a while to cut metal wire. Our bomb plants will clear a lot of wire. Or you know, you just run through it and heal up afterwards. Tip 176. Get more dark side boost. If you kill hunters in or around the boss lair, don't loot them just yet. Pick up the bounty, scan, loot the hunter, and you're back at 5 seconds of Dark Side Boost. Tip 177. Loot Bug. Sometimes the game doesn't let you switch weapons from the ground. This is sadly a known bug. A reliable workaround for this is burning the body and using a choke bomb. Afterwards, you can loot the enemy weapons. You can also try to shoot the weapons, but that might end up in totally bugging them out and they are gone. Tip 178. Map and boss movement. Once you have all clues for the boss, the boss target icon will appear on the map. This crosshair is actually a super accurate representation of where the boss is. That means the moment the boss starts moving, because people are fighting him, this crosshair will move too. This way you can check from everywhere on the map if people are already engaging the boss. Tip 179. Dark side and boss movement. Once you have all clues for the boss, the blue glow that you can see now in dark side will represent the boss itself. That means the moment this blue glow is moving, people trigger the boss and are fighting it. You have to be somewhat close though to be able to see if the blue glow is moving or not. Tip 180. Fake revives slash loots. Here comes an anti-third party movement hint. Some people observe gunfights and wait for one side to win. They wait for you to loot or to revive your teammate. The moment you do that, they will shoot you. Start a revive or loot animation and cancel it after a second. This way you can sometimes bait a shot. I definitely recommend this while doing a revive in the open. Tip 181. Don't always go to the nearest extraction zone. Plan your path to the extraction. Listen to gunshots on the map. Check where the supply points are. Check where you have to cross open fields or rivers. Don't always go to the nearest extraction. Sometimes it's smarter to invest a few extra steps in exchange for a safer extraction route. Additionally, you might make some extraction campers cry a little because they're waiting at the wrong extraction. Tip 182. Split up defenses when defending the boss lair. If you're confident enough, this tactic can give you some easy snacks. Split up your defenses while protecting the banish. Most people defend from within the boss lair. Having one player defend from a bar next to the main building or in another convenient spot can catch people off guard. An example. Lots of people peek from this dirt hill here into Hemlock and Hyde. Waiting in the dirt hill and not in the boss lair gave us already plenty of easy kills. This has of course some risk attached to it because you can end up in a 1v2 quite fast. Tip 183. Turned on generators. Since one of the recent patches, generators can be turned on before the match starts. A turned on generator is no longer an indication for players. Tip 184. Trip mines and barrels. Once and for all, alert trip mines work on all barrels. It doesn't matter which side is facing the barrel. Priorities are red, yellow and then green. The red one will most likely kill the enemy with the instant explosion. The yellow barrel will instantly burn 25 health points and set the hunter on fire. Which means a small bar will be lost instantly. And the green barrel will release a poison cloud and bees. The concertina trip mine only works with the green barrels. Tip 185. Combination of traps. This is an update of an older tip. Place bear traps in front of the concertina trap to generate an even more lethal setup. In old videos I told you to place the concertina trip mine on top of the bear traps. But sometimes the explosion of the concertina trip mine triggered the bear traps and the bear traps dealt no damage. 
Therefore, place the bear traps slightly in front of the concertina trip mine. For the most lethal concertina booby trap, you place bear traps in front of a concertina trip mine, next to a green barrel. Tip 186. Entering coops and kennels. You can enter all chicken coops and dog kennels. This can come in handy to get back your tossed throwing knife or crossbow bolt. At least for the throwing knives, this is important, because you really don't want to refill them with toolboxes. The boxes can refill something way more valuable, missing medkit charges or empty consumable slots. Tip 187. Healing teammates. You can heal teammates with medkits and vitality shots. On PC, right click, wait for the animation to change, then press left click to heal them while you still hold right click. Tip 188. Weakness meat hands. They are weak to poison. Lots of people think they are immune, but they are not. They die pretty quickly to poison ammunition and poison bolts work like a charm. Tip 189. Restoring Dark Side Boost. You can restore one second of Dark Side Boost by looting dead hunters. Alternatively, if the second boss isn't banished yet, you can collect the other clues. Each clue will give you another second of Dark Side Boost. <laughs> Tip 190. Necromancing Teammates. Your teammate is down and on fire, somewhere out in the open, and you have no choke bomb? Wait for the fire to go out. Then necromancer your teammate from a safe spot. The bar is gone anyway and the revive will stop the burning. Even if they kill him, they have to find another fire source again, which might give you some more time. And you would be surprised how often necro works when it actually shouldn't. Tip 191. Legendary Hunters. Legendary Hunters are never worth their money. You don't see their health bars and traits before recruiting them and they come without any guns. You pick them for the style points. Only exception, you just prestiged and you gamble that they come with good traits that you don't have unlocked yet. Tip 192. Guns with the least amount of sway. The guns with the least amount of sway in Hunt Showdown are the Winfield C and the Officer Carbine. They are insanely stable. So if you're looking for some guns that make aiming a bit easier, here you go. By the way, the stat that gives you info about this is the handling stat in the store. Tip 193. Learn to intercept. Learn to read your enemies and check extractions. This is very similar to tip 181, just from a different point of view. If you don't feel confident in pushing boss layers, or your loadout simply makes it really hard to do so, try to intercept instead of fighting at the boss layer. It's not really a lot of fun to push with a scoped weapon into a boss layer defended by shotguns. However, don't just intercept at the extraction point, because if you screw up, there's almost nothing you can do anymore. Look for good ambush positions. Shoot from an elevated position, wait for them to cross open field, or even better, to cross deep water. Tip 194. Boss layer guards. If you're the first at the boss, try to sneak into the boss layer. Avoid killing AI around the lair. This will help you later to hear approaching hunters. If they decide to kill the AI loudly, you even get some intel regarding their loadouts. Tip 195. Team balance. Balance your loadouts in your team. One teammate with a Mosin Sniper and a Mosin Obras, and the other teammate with a Romero Hatchet and a Double Nagant. This is very difficult to play. It's more like two solos fighting against one real duo. If you don't stick together, you can't help each other very well, and if you stick together, one of you will fight at the disadvantage. Tip 196. Know what to reveal. If you absolutely have to shoot something, be aware of which gun you use. You're giving your enemies crucial information. Reveal something more harmless. However, you can intentionally shoot a shotgun at the boss just once, because it might keep people at bay. Tip 197. Hit hard and move fast. In a firefight and you hit a target, it can be good to use their healing moment to switch cover or to reposition a bit. This might catch your enemy off guard. 
This works better the stronger your guns are. Looking at you there, Sparks. Tip 198. Pincer moves. As a team, attack from different angles. Once you flank far enough to one side, while your teammate is holding the angle, there is no more room for the enemy to take cover. Tip 199. Choke bombs. Instant detonation. Are you scared now after this video that people will counter your choke bombs with Dauntless? Don't worry. If you toss a choke bomb on your teammate right away and it lands in the fire, the choke bomb will detonate with the first tick of fire damage. So you don't really need to cook it in this kind of situation. Tip 200. Missing bars and wellspring. You can lose bars as a wellspring, they will be restored after the match. And the final tip, you play to have fun. Having a hard time? Play Free Hunters. Play something stupid. This is how I still enjoy the game, even after thousands of hours. Don't let other people tell you how to play. You do not own anybody a specific playstyle. Your free time, another one your fun time. Wall, I guess. Yeah. And that's it. I hope there were a few things in the video that you didn't know yet. If you like what you saw, sharing the video with your friends and communities would be much appreciated. I have a few more guides coming up over the next couple weeks and months. Looking forward to share that with you guys. Then a special shout out to these amazing people here, my patrons. Thank you guys for supporting our little project. Thank you for watching. Lots of hunt and also non-hunt content will come soon. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, have a good day and bye bye.